Good evening, everybody. Call the uh, Halifax Planning Board into session. I'm being 6:33. On the agenda, we have a special permit variance 884. Uh, permit number for Duncan Donut. Duncan Donuts for sign. Uh, ongoing business meeting minutes for approval and other items to come before us. Do I have a motion to accept the agenda? Yeah. Make a motion to accept the agenda, Fred. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 All members present except uh, Larry Belcher. Okay. This is just special permit. That's a hearing to correct? Yes. For 635. Okay. Technically, I believe we have to read it in. No, it's actually. In 635, do I have a motion to um, recess the planning board meeting and go into uh, public hearing? Make a motion to suspend the current planning board meeting and open the public hearing. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The Halifax Planning Board will hold a public hearing on December 20th, 2018 at 6.35 p.m. in meeting room one at the town hall um, on the application of Joseph Murray for, uh, of Hingham, Mass. to seek a special permit or variance to have a halo lighting for the existing Dunkin' Donuts, a wall sign, and any potential tenant wall sign installed there hereafter on commercial building located at 355 Plymouth Street, Halifax, Mass. Said property is owned by Bike Realty, LLC, 72 Sharp Street, Unit A7, Hingham, Mass. As shown on Assessor's Map 63, Lot 13, the applicant seeks a special permit and or a variant for a halo illuminated illumination uh, sign in accordance with the zone and bylaws of the town of Halifax under section 167-13D 5A 
exterior signs, illumination standards, and in accordance with section 167-13CD, uh, area zone commercial business. Okay. Mr. Murray? Yeah. Um, I think we met uh, on the last meeting, too, and uh, you probably have this in your package, but I did bring some extra copies as well. Okay. Um, that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, we had originally um, come before the board to uh, install the sign that's up on the tower that you see there, um, and we asked to have um, this type of a lighting, which we would call the halo lighting at the time. And um, we didn't go through a special permit process at the time. We went through a discussion, but we didn't actually have a special permit uh, hearing. So on that, to essentially ask for the same thing, but in the format of a special hearing. And what we'd like to do is to um, light up that sign in terms of having the light reflect off the back of the building. And that's the how the halo lighting works. The light actually faces the building and then it hits a backer and that's how it puts a halo effect on the letters. The light does not penetrate the letter itself. Okay. I don't know if that's enough information, but <laughs> that's what I have. <laughs> all right. So we'll The sign will stay the same size and all that. And I did put in there regarding the tenants from our last meeting. Um, we know, and we can put that as a condition should you accept it, um, that the tenant still would have to come to you for size and you know the type of sign and the, the standard procedure that they would bring in the sign. So, um, okay. but that's what they would come and propose when they come. But they still have to go through that process, and that can be a condition should you uh, agree. Okay. Well, for discussion. I think it's the one thing that your sign guy, when he first came in here, he, he was describing halo illumination. Um, which way is the LEDs facing? Are they facing towards the letters or towards the backer? Towards the building. Towards the backer. So it's nothing more than lights on the back of letters, and then technically the only thing that those lights are hitting is a backer of a sign, and they're not internally <coughs> illuminating the letters which would consist of that sign, correct? That's right. All right. Anybody else? Nope. Mark? I just want to move a second. Sure. Do you also know how far the backer is away from the building itself? Um, I see three inch thick letters. Yep. Um, but I believe, and I'm not entirely sure of that. Um, uh, from the scale here, yeah, I, I would say. I'm assuming it's less than two, probably. Less than two inches, yes. And in our bylaws, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have exterior sign bylaws that do allow signs to be lit up if they're at least if they're within two inches away from an ex from a wall. Doesn't say in our bylaws whether it's exterior or interior. Technically speaking, they just say from a from a wall or from a facing structure or like some sort of. Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking. I'm just going to use the term wall. Okay. I was looking it up on my last. Yep. Okay. So are we going to be granting the, the special board. permit under 167.13 C 1 D? That's where you push 
afternoon. Yes, the public hearing writing does call 13 D five. Uh, I'm just noticing on some of the, the building think. inspector has 16713 C1 D. That would be correct, wouldn't it? What does the application refer to it differently? Yes. C1D is just the um, zoning bylaw saying that the board is allowed to okay. grant special permits. No, that would be C2. No. C1D just says you could grant a special permit for the lighted signs, signs which are larger than those allowed by writer's signs, not allowed by the So that just identifies that the planning board can grant a special permit for that work. And then section two identifies the special permit granting authority as the planning board. So if we consider <clears throat> if we consider that the lighting signs indicate that illuminated signs and internally illuminated signs are the same. Seven thirteen one. Illuminated signs are allowed by right in the business district. Before we get into all of this stuff, but as as a resident, do you have any? I don't have any objections to it. Okay. The only thing we were concerned about was the neon. Signs, we didn't. Okay. But I don't think he would do that. We, we talked about options if I didn't get some kind of lighting and, you know, lighting it up, and I think it was pointed out earlier, lighting up more area with gooseneck lights or something like that, or as some of the neighbors nearby have done, they put something behind the window, which, but we're trying to not do that because I don't want to do that. <laughs> I mean, I, but I have to have some kind of sign that's going to light up, but, you know, it's our intention to do that, so okay. that's what we talked about. Is that, is that right? Did I get that right? All right. Okay, I don't want to put a question. <laughs> Because under section 167.13.5, illumination standards, a sign may be illuminated only by a white, steady, stationary light of reasonable intensity, shielded, and directly directed solely 
at the sign and shall not be permitted to shine on residential property or no travelways. So, I mean, if you're shining on the building, you're not shining it up on anybody else, and you're looking for a steady white light. Steady white light. And the letters are made of aluminum, right? So obviously yeah. they're not. There's no way it could shine through mm -hmm. aluminum. That's right. I brought some other signs from other businesses, but that's the intent. So yep. we recognize that no light can penetrate the letter. Mm -hmm. You got to look at it this way too. It's not a fully enclosed cabinet either, where the lights, the the lighting source isn't enclosed all within the sign. The back is still open on the sign. So if you were to think of like a a normal cabinet style lighting where everything is enclosed and it's illuminating a permeable through it. Yeah, like a permeable um, like signage. A can, a can yeah. Sign with a yeah. Face, yeah. I mean stuff yeah. that's that's a little this is a little bit different. This is nothing more than if you were to have even a piece of steel plate that's etched with letters and then light shining on top of it and a light going to the back right through the letters, so. It, it seems from what we've seen, it's less disrupting than lighting up the tower, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, because, sure. you know, the alternative, we all know what it is, you go snack it and whatever. And that's LED and then all of a sudden you lighten up the you, whole building. This is just lighting up that footprint around the light, if you will, you know, mm -hmm. if I can describe it once. Yeah, it makes a greater impact with less light. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it, as far as it goes, I, I mean, we went over the details, on, and I, mean, I am for it. I just want to make sure that we get it and get it right so yeah. it satisfies everyone. Fair enough. And keep the name on. <laughs> Does the LED, did they give you a figure on how many looms the LED lights would be? Um, that I don't have for brightness. Less. It's on here, and I'm sorry. That's uh, no, I just this is from the site company, and that's where my yeah. expertise fails. Because um, that's where I mean, obviously, the the light, the bylaws do say you know a reasonable light, yeah. you know, white light, steady light. Yeah. But I know LEDs can be quite bright at times, especially if it's going off of a backer, like a aluminum based backer. So maybe just ask what. Make sure it's not a high, a high loom uh, LED light that's going on there because then you'll get a lot of reflective glare right. from the street. Okay. Yeah, and w once it's up, you know, we can come down and yeah. take a look at it and make sure you're happy with it too. So uh, it is kind of small, so mm -hmm. that's going to help a little bit in a way because. There's not really much light up there when you look at it. It's less than putting one light up there. You know. Yeah, because you don't need a variance for the size or anything with the, how yeah. that fits. Um, I'm satisfied. So I think one of the one of the determinations that we need to make is we need to clarify exactly what the sign is. I, I really don't think it comes under the thinking of an internally lit sign because it doesn't shine through the sign. It's more like the lights are mounted to the back of the sign. I would entirely agree with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, an internally lit sign to me means that light projects through the sign. Yeah, Probably so it's aware of the belief that this doesn't doesn't come doesn't. under internally lit. So I just want to make sure that us granting granting the special permit is is the right route. That that's what that's what he needs.
think that would be a belt and suspenders approach, which granting a special permit for it in case it were to be considered by others as a illuminated sign. All right, because I don't think he needs a variance. I don't think he's asking for anything that we prohibit. No, yeah. and the definition in the building code isn't a definition as much as it is standards for an internally lit sign. Uh, so I don't even know that that would apply as a definition per se. I don't think something that's in the um, state building code pertains to a definition for our zone of bylaws. If, if we have a definition in the zone of bylaws, it would be there. Right. Uh, it may be something that we need to take a look at and change, but I, we can't go outside to, to find a definition and then bring it in and say, oh, this is now the definition. I would agree. My point is that it's not a definition even in the building code, so that wouldn't apply. And the intent of the bylaw would be to have that outward facing light that would project the through the face of the sign. So I think this meets the intent of just a the traditional sign. sign. Yeah. Illuminated sign. I think the light effect behind the sign would be essentially part of the sign itself as well. Clarification: If we were to approve something under a special permit, would that then also still be subject to the building inspector's review and approval of said special permit? I, my understanding was from coming to the meetings is that once. We grant the special permit, then we can proceed because that would um, proceed. I don't want to use the wrong words, but that would um, give the bearings on the existing situation, I guess. That's the way I can enjoy it. Because we, we, the first time we came, we, you know, everybody kind of said, Yeah, go forward. So I went and ordered the sign, but I got a little aggressive, but we were getting close to opening, so that was kind of my fault. But um, but then, um, and they, they came in enforcement situation. So well, that, that's I think sure. I think that's what my problem is. Is yeah. my thing is is I don't think that we need to give you a special permit. I think that what you're asking for is fine. Right. That, that that's the thing I want to make sure that like I get right. Because right. if if you had asked me and you did before and we went over every little aspect of it, yeah. I thought we did. I thought we were pretty thorough in that, yeah. and I was satisfied that you didn't need anything. So that's why I want to make sure that we're doing the right thing by giving you the permit and that you're not asking for a variance because if you needed a variance, then you'd be talking to somebody else. Right. So I just want to make sure yep. that, cause like I said, I don't, I don't think he needs one because I don't think. What he's asking for is illuminated sign. And an illuminated sign is a self-supporting sign not attached to any building or, or wall or fence, but a fixed location. This does not include portable trailer signs. Um, Problem is the and then, and then uh, um, I'm sorry, I read the wrong thing. Uh, illuminated sign. Any sign lit by electrical bulbs, fluorescent lights, or neon tubes. Tubes used as abstract, graphic, uh, decorative, or architectural means shall be considered to be construed as illuminated sign. So, I mean, illuminated sign is lit by electric bulbs. Problem is, illuminated signs allowed by right in the business district. You don't need a special permit for that. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you need a special permit. Right. Um, the problem I, is think, I think the, the the problem is 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 when somebody looks at it and says that you know it comes under the exceptions that's not allowed. 
um, and is uh, internally led. And I think where we have to get this straight is what we're calling it. See, I don't think it's internally lit, so I think he's fine without a special permit. I don't right. think it's required. That's why I kind of gave it the go ahead. So that would mean a variance from the zoning board? No, you don't need it. But there's, if we do nothing, there's already been a determination from another town department that has classified it otherwise. That would be my concern. <laughs> I'll be coming back again. <laughs> would you so, consider it really deep? I know you have to go through the process, and I appreciate what you're doing. But yep. That's, yeah. Hmm. That is the concern. They go to the extent of defining or going through saying electric bulbs, fluorescent lights, and neon tubes, but would you classify LEDs electric as bulb. electric bulbs because they're light emitting diodes? They're not technically a bulb. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. We're, well, we're the we, did, we discussed the technology yeah. and the terminology. Yeah. We discussed that. From, yeah. it, it, I, it's it's I true. It, it's true. I mean, I, think I, I don't think that these the terms that were set in place reflect or have anything to do with what you're proposing. Right. And that's why I don't think you need a special permit. And I don't. I I think it's just okay. Yeah. That's what I want to get correct tonight. So it, if I if we're of the opinion that it is okay, where do we go from there? So the language in the authority for the special permit indicates that we can grant a special permit for a lighted sign, right? So this could be construed a generally lighted sign because there's no definition, of course, for lighted signs. So. There's little leeway there, it seems, for being able to grant a special permit for these kinds of things. Uh, since I don't believe it's an internally lit sign, which would be prohibited, theoretically, we could grant a special permit, it seems like, for a lighted sign. Okay. But a special permit for a lighted sign, signs which are larger than those allowed by right? Yeah, see, it's not larger. But no, I think those are the options. If you oh, want to build right. a larger sign, we could grant a, a special permit for a larger sign by right. But this is not larger. This would be a special permit for a lighted sign, which seems like there's some leeway for special permit granting authority for lighted signs of all types. Whether or not they're otherwise identified in the regulations. This could fall into a category that is neither internally lit or otherwise a other lighted sign category, right? Just a lighted sign. Could it be granted for some kind of wording that says, you know, what we've been talking about, like a halo lit wording? Is that worth putting in there or uh, something? Because I'm sure that you have to think of what's going to happen down the line. And, um, you know. That's why I'd almost like to set it now that anyone that proposes this, even in the future, doesn't have to go through the special permitting process. I don't think it's necessary. But I think they so not to use you as the thing, but I'd like to yeah. kind of, if we could get this done now, then, and then. The problem is if we say it's a certain type of light that we believe is correct, and there's a conflicting opinion from another town department that doesn't feel the same way or has a different opinion. Well, I mean, what, I mean, one of the things is, you know, the planning board is a five member board elected by the people. Yep. Um, we make a decision that's the way we read the law. If somebody wants to challenge that, they can challenge it, but, you know, yep. that's our decision. Um, other people are appointed. I mean, that's not, you know. Not to suggest something, but I'll, I will anyway, <laughs> but if you do leave it as a special permit, if you feel that that's the way to go, it means that other people have to come back to you in, in the event in the future that this happens, and that gives you another piece of control over the situation so that people just don't go crazy and 
change what goes on in the town. You know, I mean that they now they they have to come back to you. So um, I'm doing that, and I don't have a problem doing that because I'm asking if permission to do something that's different. So. I don't know. Yeah, my only thing is when you first came in and proposed it, we looked at it, we thought it was okay, we thought, so yeah. I look at it like I think it's your right to put that sign on there. I, I, so I think it's everybody else's right to put up a similar style sign. Gotcha. So I'd like to protect everybody's rights so they don't have to come for it because I think it's their right. Well, I'll tell you, they're still going to come in front of us for signs, just to kind of. But they don't have to over, ask. But they don't have to ask us for permission. Yeah. I, th I think we just need to write our decision up yeah. so that it's plain the way we wrote it, yeah. okay. and that anybody can understand it, and that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I, I kind of understand what you're saying. You certainly don't want to have to try to come back through the, if somebody appeals it to come back through us, but you know, we'll cross that bridge. We get to it. Yeah. Yeah, so I would argue that this, yeah, I, w I would argue that this is a lighted sign that is not otherwise defined in the zoning under any other category, and because it's not specifically identified in the table of allowed uses, conservatively granting a special permit would be the way to address this particular type of sign. So go back to special permit because it's not otherwise identified. It's not internally lit. Uh, we know the determination that it needs no other approval might not be the most effective way of supporting the proposal if we all believe it falls within the regulations. So I think that would be a way of addressing the application in a way that makes sense and would be defensible. I'm going to go from the angle of saying it's a, an illuminated sign that's in the business district with the right for the sign to be up there. And it does fall within the standards of the definition of what an illuminated sign is, and it is not internally illuminated, so I feel that there's no need for a special permit. I think the problem with that one is that the sign will never go up if yeah, that's, that's the case. What I don't want to have to happen. <laughs> and I don't know that you can get a variance for something that's not allowed if it's been determined a certain type of sign that's not allowed. Right. Yeah, if we determine it that, then you can't. Well, what I'm saying is that if, if we have a, a board here that decides that that's what the definition of the sign is, then, you know, if somebody else challenges it, then we'll challenge it. Like, yeah, I feel. But, I, you know, I, I think that's where we need to take the stand. Yeah. Signs are already up. <laughs> it's just the see. illumination that we're yeah. really right. arguing about. I know. About yep. Thing. Yeah. But I, I, if we're going to vote it, I just want to make yeah. sure that we write it up so that there's no... Um, so is your position that it is a illuminated sign, which is just allowed by right? Yeah. It's the, the only difference is it's not illuminated by a light shining from the front, it shines from the back. Onto the wall, onto a backer. You're not reflecting light off the front of the sign. The, the, right. the building is reflecting light. And you, light. See the, light, you see the uh, outline. outline. There's no light hitting the front of the sign. Right. But it's still illuminated. Yeah, but then in the illumination standards, it talks about light being directed solely at the sign. It is at the back of it. That backer is still technically part of the sign. It's a piece, it's an accessory. It, it, the light actually only hits the sign. The backer, yeah, the dive on panel, yeah. So, I mean, if that's part of the building, the only thing you're doing is showing the light on the building. And you you put some uh, yeah you put the sign in front of it and it, it needs no permit. Yeah. It would require illuminating a larger area to do the traditional light, and you're actually illuminating a smaller area with the higher impact. So does the, greater visibility? Just a question here. Does the light literally shine towards the back of the sign, or is it shining towards the building and bouncing back? 
there's a little in the panel on the right. You can see there's something called the Dagon panel. So it hits that panel right there. On the building. Stops right there. So it hits the panel and bounces back towards the panel. Mm -hmm. All you do is lighten the panel on the building, mm -hmm. and the letters are in front of it. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. I think the, the, the only thing I can be 100% clear on is no, no, like I said before, the light doesn't come through the letter. Yep. So my, my thinking, and again, this is just me, but it's illum internally illuminated to me means it's penetrating the letter. Mm -hmm. Or it's a sign face, as Jonathan was saying that earlier. Yeah. You know, it's a can with a sign face with the old fluorescent bulbs inside. That's kind of not what we're doing. Um, or a plastic film that it shows mm -hmm. through. Right. But, but there's also a definition about that it, the light can only hit the sign. So the fact that the, that reflective part is part of the sign by design, it's not even actually the building. Sure. You're not using the building for the That's reflection, true. you're using part of the built sign. Yeah. So I, I think that also, I think that that might have been misinterpreted before where people thought that, or maybe people had thought that it was hitting the building and popping backwards. Actually not, it's hitting According to the construction on this. Yeah, no. And again, I'm not the. That would make sense too. You're not going hit, to hit, hit, hit a piece of clapboard. You're going to put something reflective to really reflect the light back. Um, so, again, I don't think you need a permit. I think I, I just don't want you to leave here tonight and not be able to turn on your sign. Yep. He still has a 20 day waiting period, whether it's a special permit, though. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. What does that mean? Anytime there's a special permit granted, whether it's zoning or planning board, yep. there's a 20 day appeal period yep. after the decision well, is. But if we don't only a special permit, because we don't think it's a special permit, then there's no waiting period. You can turn it on tonight. Mass General Law, if it's a special permit, it has to be time stamped in with the town. If we don't give him a special permit right, tonight. I'm just saying, if it is a special oh, okay. permit, right. it has a 20 day waiting yeah. period yeah. after yeah. the decision Absolutely. is time stamped with the clerk. Right. Right. And then it has to be recorded with the registry of deeds. I'm just yeah. putting it right. out there. That yeah. gives anybody a chance what to appeal. What the process is for that. that yeah. Yeah. Right. And the process would be that if we don't believe it needs a special permit, we deny it. Then where? He can turn it on tonight. But do we deny it or do you withdraw the application? Um, he could withdraw without prejudice. Yeah, you're not mad at us, right? What's up? So you're not mad at us, right? No, <laughs> no, I'm trying to work it through with you. Yeah, no, no, I think you have that. I, I just hope you, you know, know that we. So I mean, I, we, I tried. We went no, over. I appreciate it. everything you're doing. So I, I'm not, not at all. No, on we go. You know. <laughs> Is there any chance that you would be able to install the wiring physically outside the sign itself, essentially attached to the back instead of with? Within an enclosure, is that an option? Well, it, it's built now, so yeah, I have to actually look at it. All right. I, I don't think so because of weather protection, but I'm not the sign guy. Yeah, that's what I paid you point for. So yeah, I get only so far, and that's I, I don't want to be that technical with it because I might not represent that accurately. I, would also I don't want you to come out there and say this is not what we thought. Yeah. That's not what I'm trying to do. Okay. I'd rather turn it on and have you come out and say, okay. Is that all you have to do is flip a switch? Yeah. Um, okay. I don't think I actually wired it because okay. we couldn't. So I don't think there's any wiring. It's not hard to do, but we have to, there's an access panel in the tower and you have to get an electrician out there. Yeah. I have to check actually because I don't think we put the wires on it. Okay. We didn't know what we were going to do because we thought maybe we'd have to come back and put on goosenecks or LEDs or something. But like the like the pylon, it has that long strip. I mean, we could do that. It's just the whole entire tower is going to be lit. But yeah. I mean, in theory, you could wrap on the underside of the roof of the tower, like like the whole thing. But I don't think that's what you're looking for in the town. That's what I see. And I'm trying to do something that I, I think if everyone informed. I, I think as far as people's opinions, I think if they saw it, they would. Uh, I think people would like it. I think they would realize it's good, and it's not what the bylaw was trying to prohibit. You know, yeah. those old balloon plastic Great. signs. They would always break and oh, fluorescent tubes in them. And, uh, and the old fluorescents were terrible. You know, you'd have the one out, and you'd have a dark spot on your sign. And all that, so. I mean, we can turn it on. You can come and look at it. If that helps the process, I'm okay with that too. Can't find any 
these bags. Up. Yeah, I mean, one of those, one of the meetings. I mean, you, we were looking up pictures, checking them all out. So yeah. and we we got familiar. But so I don't want to seem like we're breezing over it now either, because no. I mean, we went over the details and. Didn't we make the same determination at that point, though, that it didn't need a permit? Yeah, that, that's yeah. why we sent them forward. And yeah. when we were first here before we opened the store, that's what we got, and that's what we acted on and hung the sign. But then we, you know, got a notification, so we didn't like. So that was in May. Mm -hmm. So it's December. <laughs> <laughs> but it's dark all the time. Just saying. It didn't open in May. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. You didn't open in May. Uh, we opened May 29th, I think it was. Somewhere around that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been a while. I think it was May 29th or 30th. It's right around there. But mm -hmm. Call it June. Yeah. So six months. But so far, so good. And on the other aspects. And, you know, I hope you like, I mean, the bylaw stayed right within the guidelines. And mm -hmm. I think it looks good, good to me, but uh, yeah. we were yeah. happy with the fact that it was well lit. If, if whatever decision comes out of this, you still have to adhere to the actual times that you're allowed to have it lit. Yep. Understood. Yep. Yep. So we're not going through at 3 o'clock in the morning to see this. Why? Mm -hmm. Is that all right? We can't do that on. <laughs> Honestly, you probably wouldn't even notice it because the street lights are probably lighter than this. But I mean, the sign is so small and so muted when you see it. I, I actually think you're probably going to be happy. So that's all, it's a personal judgment. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's all that, it is. Well, well, that's another thing is I didn't want that to come into play because I know that this is really nice looking. I, I, I know what they look like. They're really sweet. I, I think if, yeah. I think once more businesses in town actually see that they can put something like that, you know, they probably would, would prefer it anyway. Um, but I, I don't want that to actually go, that didn't really impact my opinion. My opinion <laughs> still is that you have the right to do that. Right. You know, regardless of the fact that it looks nice. I think it's, you're right. I agree. Let him. Well, I just hate to not grant him mm -hmm. the special permit. If we don't grant him it, does he not get the sign? That's what I don't understand, I guess. That's maybe before I That's my lose problem. how if you call it and we're name it sign, it's just allowed. You don't need a special permit. But what I'm saying is, is we did that before and somebody told him no. Like if we don't do any, if we take no action tonight, how does that help him? Like, we took no action before because we didn't think we had to, and that didn't help them. I think you can appeal a building determination, right? You can challenge. But that's why we're here, because you're, you're, yeah. you're the appeal. We're the special permit granting authority, but if it's a variance yeah. from the bylaw, you'd have to go to zoning. But I don't think it's I a think variance. It I think it would be, would it not? I don't think so. I don't think it's a variance. What's the other mechanism for disagreeing with the determination that you have? You have to appeal it to the Zoning Board of Appeals, right? For a variance. But we, or were, we were told it was a planning board decision because of your special permit. references um, signs. You, you have the control of the signs. Yes. So the mechanism for your board, I think, is the special permit rather than the variance. But I understand what you're saying. You, know, you don't feel like these one. Sadly, we've got to go down that path before. So. And we were back here. So we never got a determination from the building inspector, correct? Yeah, there is one. There is one. Yeah, so, yeah. so uh, I don't know if you want to. I got everything there. Sure. There were two letters that were given to the um, viewpoint sign. My question is, is if 
if we all agree that it doesn't need it, you go and turn on the sign. Does somebody come on and knock on the door and say shut off the sign? I don't know if that's how that plays out. Yeah, I mean, if I, if I had to request something out of the board, my only request would be if you see it fit to fit the special permit so that can proceed. If you want to condition that, condition all you want. Just to get the sign. Come down and see it. Give me a time period. Give me 30 days. We all look, take a look at it. Whatever you want to do, you know, I mean, that's, other than that, I think we're kind of going to be at a standstill, and that's, you know, not what we It's whose word on the day. If Rob comes back, if building inspector comes back and says, no, we're wrong, it's like, we're literally playing tick for tack. But isn't this ultimately our decision at the current moment? And then Rob would have to come to us and you explain have his. To appeal your decision. Right. He would only appeal our decision if we grant a special permit. And then what? If he appeals, yeah. if he appeals, and then we say no, it's not, and we we justify our case, and he still doesn't agree with us. What's the next steps? I'm not a lawyer. Well, the lawyer, the opinion we got from the attorney indicated that he would have to go get relief from the zoning board of appeals. Technically speaking, he For can variance. appeal. He can variance. Can variance. Yeah. Oh, but what would the variance be? It's That's the thing, from the actual if you, if you, your board, the, the bylaws are referencing signs to the planning board. Correct. Because the planning board makes the rulings on signs. So you choose the sizes and the colors and all that, right? So any sign comes to your board. Is that, uh, help me understand that. Except for signs that are expressly prohibited. Okay. okay. And the zoning enforcement officer determined this to be a sign that is specifically prohibited. Okay. Got it. So I don't know. Do we create a special permit on the on the idea of the fact that it is a gray area where it doesn't it, it doesn't like quantify as being an internally lit sign, but at the same time we like to protect the idea of the fact that it's that it should still pass. I mean it seems like it's, it goes extensively, but still speaking, our, our special permit can be appealed too. So you could end with the same exact result. I don't know that anybody would appeal a special permit though. You can. Well, you, you can, but I don't know that anybody would. But you can. Sure. But that goes the same pretty much anything. We, we know there's a risk to that. So. Yeah. But you know, you still end up with the same result. Could end up with the same result. Sure. One's just a little bit more intense than the other. I just still think it's fine. I think as long as the board is in agreement and makes a full determination, um, on what whether it's internally lit or it's just a lighted sign, which is what the opinion mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. then that may do it. But again, I'm not an attorney, and we just have to make sure we write up any decision correctly. Yeah, so if you wanted to, the Board of Appeals can hear appeals to hear and decide an appeal by any person aggrieved by reason of his inability to obtain a permit from any administrative official under provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 40A, or by any officer or board of this town, or by any person aggrieved by any order or decision of the building inspector or any other administrative official in violation of the provisions of Chapter 40A or by this chapter. So could go to the Board of Appeals to essentially appeal a determination or a decision that indicated this was a illuminated sign, internally illuminated sign. Which is basically what you could have done before. Because okay. this board gave you the authority to do it. Right. When I got the notification that I couldn't turn it on, I was, felt that I was directed to come back to you mm -hmm. for a special permit, so that's why I'm here. Um, no, I, my first question is, 
Okay, now that we're open, where we can. who do I ask? And I thought we asked you, of, as we all know, we all we already talked about that. I think there was a lot of confusion as to which board we were supposed yeah, to go to at that That's point. why I came here, so, because yeah. that's, you know, the, my question as the person trying to install the sign was, um, who do I ask? And my, again, the direction given to me was, and I, you know, I don't know who gives in that office the direction I'm trying to get into a little bit, but I'm just trying to say it seemed like I was pointed here. So, well, in this in, in this matter, it seemed like we were we okayed the sign, and then the enforcer of the sign yeah. like disagreed with our decision. So. I think even if we supported it, I think there would still be a bit of a yeah, like there's somebody conflict. above us that gets to say no, Probably. I guess. So I think going through a appeal through the zoning board would be the way to de get a definitive determination that would be able to overrule any other determination. And that would be the mechanism for defining what this sign might be and whether or not it complies with the zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's my personal take on it based on what I've seen. Yeah. I think we'd, we'd be fully supportive of it. What's that? I think we would be fully supportive of okay. uh, the application. Well, I think what we need to do is we make we need to make a motion, if, if we make a motion to approve it, based on the fact that um, our determination is it is not internally lit. It is an illuminated sign, and it happens by right in a commercial district. But do the, we then approve a special permit for something? It's not a special permit. We're approving the, the sign. Yeah, okay. So not the actual application, because the application is for a special permit. Well, I, I, say you know, I, I don't see how you, you know, there's nothing in the special permit that we need to grant. Right. Because... What we're saying is the determination is it fits. I agree. I, I, I will make a motion to determine that the halo lighting proposed at Dunkin' Donuts. I think first, before we do that, we would have to close the public hearing and then, is that how it would work? Well, I mean, we, we could talk about this to try to figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> because we don't want to close that so if it doesn't go that way. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry. To take a preemptive vote then? I mean, what you could do with the Make with the special the hearing determination. You, you you we could postpone this the hearing to the next meeting and make a determination on this, and it's still open. Yeah. That's that that a long to notification period to continue. Then right? You would also need to so post your notification. Correct. Public hearing. Mm -hmm. No, no one has to be notified. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, they would. Probably. They'll be notified if we. Uh, postpone it right now. No. Okay. Yes, but they will. You don't they, have to send out the little button. On notice sure. right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any, okay. Anybody I here. Think, yeah. I don't have to send out notice. No, 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 no. No, that's what I'm saying. No, this, no, anybody at the public hearing is on notice that it is continued. Mm -hmm. Anybody that had an interest, if anybody calls and asks about it, then they would be told it's been postponed. Uh, continued. Continued. But, but the notice has already been out, and that would keep it open. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's... That's where we could continue the hearing to the next meeting, and then we can make this determination and let it go forward. That seems to make sense. That's fine. Okay. Yep. So I need a motion to continue the hearing. I'll uh, make a motion to continue close, the close it now and continue it till our next meeting. Okay. Make a motion to suspend the. Public. The public hearing until our next scheduled planning board meeting, close the public um, hearing, and reopen the scheduled planning board meeting. And our next meeting would be January 3rd. 3rd. January 3rd? Mm -hmm. 2020. 2019. Okay. So there's a motion to continue the hearing close the hearing and open the planning board back up. Is there a second? Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I'll go ahead.
<laughs> Make a motion. Yep. To approve. Make a motion to approve the proposed lighting sign at Dunkin' Donuts at 8... 355 Plymouth Street, Halifax. Yep, that is my proposal. How about we approve it as a illuminated sign as opposed to a internally lit illuminated sign? Right. Just to make that distinction. Ditto. <laughs> as determination by the planning board. As, as the, determined by right. Which, by yeah, which is allowed board. by right yeah, in the business district. As there was no definition in our bylaws, and that's what we determined it to be. So there's a motion. Is there a second? I will second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, off to the zoning board. Is it wait? No. Till January 3rd? Not off to the zoning board. No. What? We just approved. We just approved the zoning. Okay. Okay. And I would say come and look. And then we what we think is right. And then look right. before we turn on and look for the determination to get in that first. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'll use a little bit of that. I just don't want to flip the switch in. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah, it's going to take a while. I mean, be the day be busy next week. It'll be the day after Christmas, right? <laughs> <laughs> right so Pretty much. The, the electrician will work Christmas for you, right? <laughs> yeah. So do we actually continue the public hearing to January 3rd? Mm -hmm. Special permits open still. Special permits still open. Okay. okay. Yep. Great. Cool. Yeah. And then we'll all stand there when it starts on night and check it out. And if you guys want some adjustments, um, let's talk about that. So. Okay. Right. Yeah, Sounds good. We're kind of in it for the long run, so we want to make sure that you're happy with it. Kind of. Appreciate it. We're kind of in it for the long run. It's a fairly solid commitment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. So. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Do we have any minutes? Um, we do. There's a whole folder over there for the meeting minutes. Oh, look at that. Yeah. 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 Ye
And I, I just, just happened to look through my and emails. And I just saw the notes in my... Um, we'll, we'll vote. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like a <laughs> two and change the like, fourth yeah. word on the seventh page. I was like, that's all in one page. Oh, that's yeah. easy. Okay. Do we have enough people that. for that? Me, Larry, Jonathan. Oh, I can't do that. Everybody. Okay, so you three can do it. Okay. So you can, you guys can do this one. I can't. You can't. No, let's not that one. That seemed like a quick meeting too. Yeah. It yeah. Was paid, Just paid, make paid. sure whoever is motioning and approving is. The people that were here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was good. What about? <laughs> I made it two pages just for the Carlos, what, uh, what one do you have? The one with the gold pin? Uh, November 15th. Oh. That's the one with the, uh, the guy that had the industrial site where he wants to see the log splitting. Oh, yep, yep, yep. All right. No, I remember that. You read? I read that one. Yeah. Oh, no. Anybody want to see this one? No, have you seen that one though? That's a whole other one. Make a motion. Yeah, that's the one that I was in here, folks. You missed a long time. Can I make a motion on this December 6th one? Sure. Well, sure. I make a motion that we approve the minutes as entered for December 6, 2018. Uh, members present Gordon, Mark, Carlos. We have a motion or a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Then make a motion to approve the November 1st, 2018 minutes. Okay. Members present are Gordon Andrews, Mark Milius, Jonathan Sirocco, Absent, Larry Belcher, and Carlos Scuffle. Okay. You can you can second that one if you want. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I can't act on that one. Yeah. Just the one we voted? Something wrong with my pen. I don't know what I <laughs> Did we vote this one already? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, sure. I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from November 15th, 2018. Members present Gordon Andrews, Jonathan Sirocco, Larry Barrel, Carlos Sculte. I have a motion to approve. Who is here? And Second. Not you, Mark. Jonathan. Oh, not my Okay. John. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, uh, well, no. I have to do two copies of it. Oh, this is a ball right before Christmas. We should have stamps. Yeah, that'd be good. What can we have cut? Meeting minutes would be awesome. Oh, I love those stamps. Yeah, for a minute. Yeah, I'll cut up. Cut up? Yeah. I'll go eat. That page or something. I need a, I need a Carlos kind of signature. <laughs> Just all slushy. Just all slushy. I'm just gonna create an X. Do we have two copies yeah. of this one going? Yes, okay. We need another one. You're gonna make this quick, but I'm about to lose battery, so. There's only three of them, right? Oh, yeah, we need to do two copies. Three. One, yeah. two, three. Yeah. 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 Yeah.